I rise to speak to support in the path of Treaty Bill 2023. The importance of this day and this moment in our history cannot be overstated. For centuries, we have ignored uncomfortable truths. We have gone along with the fantasy that Australia was empty when settlers arrived and buried their sins in the past. We have taught our children a sanitised version of their own story, ignorant of facts, hard-hearted and blinkered. For 200 years, we have attempted to render invisible a culture that has lasted 60,000 years. For the past will not be silenced and our future will not be wasted. Mr Speaker, each generation is called to make its mark on its age. A treaty with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples is ours. This moment, here and now, begins to put right centuries of wrongs. Why Australia was not afforded the treaties offered to the First Nations people in New Zealand, Northern America and Canada is a question for historians to answer. The question we have asked is whether we allow that oversight to continue. The answer is no. And that is something about which every Queenslander can feel proud. And I'm glad so many have joined us in the gallery today to see this historic moment. This day has come because of those who have carried this fight for so long. Their names are too many to mention. But I will say how proud I am to lead a government that includes so many MPs with First Nation, who are First Nations the first Aboriginal woman ever to be elected to the Queensland Parliament and appointed to Cabinet, Leanne Enoch, the first woman ever elected from the Torres Strait Island, from Torres Strait, the member for Cook, Cynthia Louie, yeah. and Lance McCallum, a proud Gubby Gubby man, Assistant Minister and member for Bundamba. Yeah. And I say to those opposite, you want to talk about closing their gap? We have members in our team, in our government, fighting every single day for the communities and the people that they represent. I extend my thanks to the Community Support and Services Committee and the Secretariat for their thoughtful and thorough consideration of the bill. I also thank the First Nations people of my own electorate of Inala. I listened to them, their guidance. I was just with them recently and I value their input and what they are doing in our local community. To the Interim Truth and Treaty Body, the bill is testament to your tenacity, your commitment and your insight. You guided the bill through the committee stage, helping to refine the legislation to the point that we are debating it today. So many people and organisations have been involved in getting us to this point. They made submissions to the committee and participated in committee hearings all over the state. Thank you for your contributions. Mr Speaker, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Queenslanders have been calling for a treaty, or treaties for many generations. Hundreds of years too late, we have come to the table with a firm commitment made in 2019 to refrain the relationship with our First Nations people and start a conversation about treaty with the Queensland people. We have not faltered in our commitment and our steadfast determination to make treaty a reality. Mr Speaker, this bill is a historic step. It sets up the framework for establishing the key bodies and the supporting architecture to take the next steps in this journey. The bill established the First Nations Treaty Institute. The institute will not represent the state or be involved in treaty negotiations. Its role is to prepare Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders for treaty negotiation. It will focus on the development of a treaty-making framework. It will empower First Nations people to prepare for and take their rightful part at the table in treaty negotiations. It reflects that the government and our First Nations people want the treaty-making process to be driven by communities to reflect their own individual and unique needs and stories. Mr Speaker, it is said that to move forward, we must acknowledge the past. That is why truth-telling is such an important part of the path to treaty, telling the stories of our shared history, stories that are confronting and painful, stories that will be harrowing and difficult to tell and difficult to listen to and difficult to understand. But the truth of our colonial past and not-so-distant past must be told for the healing process to commence. The bill establishes the truth-telling and healing inquiry. The inquiry will adopt a non-legalistic and non-adversarial approach. It will travel the state, allowing First Nations people to tell their stories, their own stories and the stories of their ancestors handed down from generation to generation. And those, those stories will be documented. 
Mr Speaker, North Queensland's role in treaty and reconciliation and recognition of the rights of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders peoples has, been recognised, has to be recognised. It is no coincidence that we are debating this bill here at the regional sitting of Parliament in Cairns. The First Nations member of any, the First Nations member of any parliament in Australia was elected from Cook, Eddie Durrell. Minister Crawford spoke yesterday about his, about his meeting with Eddie's son, Fred, and the gift of the broken tip spear handed by Fred's ancestor, the little old man, to Captain Cook on the banks of the Endeavour River. This was the first act of reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. You only have to go to Cooktown and hear Mayor Peter Cook tells any person visiting and tells them this story and takes them to visit the site. Eddie Koiki Mabo from the Torres Strait took the first steps in what has been a long journey toward recognition of native title rights in Australia. Five men from the Torres Strait with little formal education but who were well versed in the laws and traditions of their own culture were able to educate an entire nation our politicians, our lawyers, our academics and judges, the highest court in the land, to understand the intricate system of land ownership that existed in the Murray Islands. The Northern Queensland Land Council have taken an active part in economic development for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in the far north. The Tropical North Queensland First Nations Tourism Action Plan released last year recognised the need for a local plan for First Nations tourism in the region and our government's land and sea ranger program is a $24 million investment to provide funding to First Nation organisations across Queensland to employ Indigenous rangers who will combine new technologies with traditional knowledge to protect and conserve our country. Indigenous land and sea rangers also provide guidance to young people through junior ranger programs and school-based education and training. Mr Speaker, the bill also addresses a number of legislative anomalies and rep repressive provisions that are a hangover from an era where the Queensland Government sought to control the lives and movements of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Queenslanders. By repealing a number of provisions in the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Communities Justice Land and Other Matters Act 1984. This is more than a gesture and a step towards righting the wrongs of the past and ensuring compatibility with the Human Rights Act. Mr Speaker, Path to Treaty is a unique opportunity for Queensland. It provides the framework for a journey toward reconciliation. I have confidence that this is the right time in our history to embark on this journey of discovery and reconciliation, a Queensland where Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and non-Indigenous peoples can live together as true equals where we can thrive and prosper in Queensland, where we acknowledge our sometimes painful past and move forward together as one in the spirit of cooperation. Mr Speaker, this is a watershed piece of legislation. The Path to Treaty Bill demonstrates our government's commitment to make a treaty a reality for Queensland. As the poet Udru Nunakul said, to my father's father, the pain, the sorrow. To our children's children, the glad tomorrow. And I commend this bill to the House.